All righty, and I'm live. Let me go ahead and switch on my camera. All right, hey guys, sorry for the lighting. I tried to get the lights brighter, but it ended up being too bright. But anyways, this is a short stream because this is an introductory stream talking about a project that I'm going to be doing uh, for the next who knows how many weeks, maybe a month or so. But for at least you know until summer's over with about. Um, I'm going to be making um, a $500 base into a sound like a $10,000 base, as this is what the description is. Before I show you what, I'll talk about the, the reason and the what it is. So I have here Getty Lee's Big Beautiful Book of Bass. And I can read a little writing there, but in it on page... Uh, 393. This is showing off. You know, Getty Lee has a huge collection. A lot of it he did not use studio wise, touring wise, stuff he collected. But this one bass, and that was used by him and on five albums uh, from Power Windows to Hold Your Fire to Show of Hands to Presto to Roll the Bones was his Mark I and Mark II wall bass. As you can see here, uh, obviously my camera sucks, but in it, you see his black one is the Mark One. It's got twenty like one frets, and the Mark Two is the red one, and it has twenty four frets. And the Mark One and the Mark Two are kind of the same. They're, you know, I've heard there's wiring little differences, and I'll get to that later. But what Getty talks about. Um, he said, um, in 1985, the mall, the wall Mark one black experiments in sound continue when I, but when we returned to great Britain to record at the Menor studios in Oxford, uh, our new producer, Peter Collins brought in some of his own instruments. One of them, one of which was a wall base. I picked it up. Or you know, it picked my curiosity partly because Percy Jones, a bassist, I hugely admired. So that's an interesting thing. Um, and it says, you know, and, I, and I played one in Brand X. Getty is a big fan of uh, of, of Percy Jones and uh, Brand X, but uh, he says I was struggling to get the right kind of snap out of my Ricky during recordings of Big Money, and I understand I had a Rickenbacker myself. Um, it's not the same. Uh, Rickenbackers are like really pissed off, unique, like P bases with that mud bucker, like pickup in there. So you get like almost like, it's not, not like Billy Sheehan, but it's, it's totally different tone. I mean, right now I have an R87 with, uh, a Rick replacement SD pickup in it. And it's very gnarly and pissed off. I can get from Cliff to John Taylor. Hey, Duran Duran and the metallic and the Megadeth who he was in metallic for a year or so <laughs> anyways mixing it up but yeah um totally different sound i can see why he branched out um so i tried the wall and strung it with lighter gauge strings than i normally use yeah he used i think 95 was his uh was the stick of string instead of like a 100 or 105 i like using 105s myself particularly but i think i probably do what he did too and and we'll get onto that later when I get new strings. But he said, uh, I, I really like the results. I asked the small British company to make me the bases that you'll see in the selection. I used them on the for the next several years. He used them for almost, almost feels like 10 years he played them. So from like the mid 80s to almost early, not into the early 90s. And like I said, he had the black one and then he had the red one. The black one was all mahogany and the, uh, the red one was, I think, maple. With it's got a black racer stripe on the back of the body. You can barely tell, but when you look at the back of it, you can see it right here. You can see that nice black skunk stripe there. And you know, then he's got. Then there's Getty's five string wall. Yes, Getty Lee owned a five string bass, and it was in a wall marked two five string and all black. Which looks oddly similar to the one that uh, Jason Newstead used on um, the, the
the uh, one music video. Not sure if he recorded with it, but doesn't matter. You can't really hear it anyways. That's a whole other story and another topic for another time. With that said, we've got a brief history of the company of Electric Wood. In Getty's words, he talks about uh, it was night. It was in 1978 that Ian Wall Waller met Pete the Fish Stevens and formed the Electric Wood Company. They began making super high quality custom bases using beautiful selected pieces of um, of wood. The housing their active circuitry in a shield did um, rear cavity to make them super quiet. After production, um, after my producer at the time, Peter Collins turned me on to them. I met the guys at the shop and placed my custom order. Sadly, Ian Waller passed away in 1988, but Pete carried on the team, which included Paul Herman, who runs the company today. Unfortunately, Pete did pass away a while back. I think it was about 10 years or so ago. I don't remember, but um, and, and, uh, but yeah, Paul's there and he's taking care of the company there. And I'll get to talking about that in a second. But other wall players include Paul McCartney, Percy Jones, and Mick Carnage of uh, Japan. He's also missing one other amazing, well, two other people who use the wall, which would be Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers for the Blood, Sex, Sugar, Magic album, and uh, Justin Chancellor, who was with Tool from their second album all the way till current day. And um, and you want wall tones, you look at Percy, you look at Paul, you look at Justin, you look at Mick, you rest his soul as well. Mick has already passed as well, but in Giddy. And then here, and like I showed the picture earlier, since we got some people in the chat now, let's see there. We got Lorenzo Sleestack saying, hey, we got, and we got Dale Sonovich saying, yo. And uh, electric, no, there's nothing uh, dirty about the word electric wood. Um, they were a hippie company kind of in a way in the beginning when they made wall bases. Um, their stuff originally did not look, you know, all blacked out or, you know, like Getty likes his, you know, all black. You know, usually black or gold hardware, and you know that's just the back of the red one. And I'll show you guys again since we got some people in the chat. Since I'm doing this live, this would be Getty Lee of Rush right here. Barely see it in the '80s and '90s. He's got this little wonky hairdo back then, right over there, and um, and that's him. You know, with the red one. The red one's got that little black stripe, and you know, the black one's all blacked out with gold hardware. But you could get these uh, with uh, special facings. They're, yes, they're a bass guitar company, Lorenzo, yes. Very expensive, and I'll get to you. That's why the topic is, because a wall today, you have to buy custom with bare bones for a Mark I, will cost you about ten grand. And there's a reason why, and when I get to it, I'll, I'll say it. But let me get to talking about his 1986 uh, wall Mark II five-string. He says, it's a rare that I, that I play five-string bass, but um, this was exquisitely crafted wall with a, you know, with a low B string. Allowed me to ignore using Moog pedals. These are Moog pedals or keyboard pedals. So he was using he was playing keyboards, playing bass, and singing, and occasionally hit a double neck, and he would play rhythm guitar. He, this guy could play four, three things at once and sing, and with his feet, too. He was, he's, you know, Getty's an amazing person. Rush was a great band that I, I regret not seeing. Rest in peace, uh, uh, Neil Peart. Um, but anyways, uh, this wall was made for, for me in 1986. I used it on stage for Hold Your Fire for Lock and Key. Uh, side note, when Getty recorded, when Getty recorded, um, uh, not Roll the Bones, but when Getty re recorded, um, the 1985 album Power Windows, one out one song needed the the five string, and he borrowed you know he borrowed both walls a four and a five for it. The five he used was um, the producers as well, and um, he used that one for Territories, which is one of my favorite bass uh, lines ever. Besides you know from that album, besides Big Money, and uh, that's about all he has of wall. There's no more pictures because it gets into his. His number one, his 1972 uh, black jazz bass that he recorded, you know, Tom Sawyer with. 
But with that said, you know, this is the Gay Lee book, and that was that. Uh, getting on to that, now, I want one of these bases. I've always wanted one of these bases. Like I said, it costs 10 grand bare bones just for um, – You'd get it like this. You could either get it fretless with ebony, lined or unlined, or fretted with uh, Indian rosewood. If you want to switch it around, that's going to be an upcharge. You want to uh, have maple fret board, that's an upcharge. You want to change out your the, the chrome tuners to black or you know gold, which they use real gold into those gold. That's an upcharge. Uh, you have to use a Mark One. You want to go to Mark Two or Three. That's an upcharge. You want a Mark Two five string or Mark Three five string or a Mark. Uh, three six string that's how they go uh there's no four there's only a four and a mark one there's a four and five and two and a four five and six and a, and a three but those are all up charges then bare bones you either get to pick like five different type of body facings like maple shedua uh wingate um american walnut and there's another another facing maybe it's a uh, flame maple or, or um or something, a uh, Paduke maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Paduke is Shadow. I, I, no, I think Shadow is actually Ovang Cole. It's just a different name. Like Winge has a different name too. I think it's Jatoba or something. Not Jatoba, it's something else. Yeah, there's, there's everything. Everything has a different name. But anyways, that's standard. You want to paint it all black. You want to paint it all black or color, and that's an upcharge. You want to use a different type of wood. That's an upcharge. Everything's an upcharge. So you're looking over ten grand to get exactly your dream base but with that said let me show you the base that i am going to mod and let me show you the pickups and the preamp that i'm putting in there that are close enough to be called technically a clone preamp and pickups of wall they're from two different companies as well having a little bit of pineapple juice because it's the summer hey so in here i got this base that cost me about 500 bucks new because they actually it's more than that but guitar center gave me a deal because I just hit wish list and said, hey, instead of charging you 560 bucks, I think it is, for it new, then you have to pay shipping and handling and taxes, that'd be over 600 bucks. It says we can do all that for the low, low price of, of 475. For $475, I got this Sterling by Music Man, Stingray Bass, all maple neck, maple fingerboard, and a mahogany body which walls use mahogany body. This isn't the high quality like African mahogany that they use, but this is pretty close enough because the Music Man pickups are, are kind of the same of what you'd get in the size of a real wall pickup. And you can see it's just big pole metal pieces. This is actually passive. So this is the first ever passive Music Man. They did a, uh, a more Ernie Ball version. That is actually costs a lot more it's like two grand because that's that's the that's you know you're paying for the name and it's made in america this is not made in america it's made in indonesia but this is you know some indonesian companies make really good products and this is one of them it's uh just got two it's got three knobs it's not active so it's got a volume control which is push push which will give you a volume boost kind of like almost like a fake active and it does change the tone a little bit you have a three-way rotary switch, so this is like a pickup switch, like an on-off switch, but it's got three positions for um, series, single, and parallel. And then this is the passive tone control. That's it, and you get an output jack right here. That's it. It's a really cool bass. It sounds really good. You probably can't hear that if you can, barely. I'm not plugged in. That was just hitting me hitting the strings. It's got six bolts. It's really cool, very vintage and not so bad. The tuners in the bridge aren't bad, but hey, you get what you pay for. <clears throat> and I can always upgrade. I'll probably upgrade those later because now it's time to show you the pickups and the preamp. All right, so I got three boxes here. I'm not going to show you too much of this because this this box has like my address on it it was shipped to me that way because but you can see right here the brand name this is the preamp it's by lucid hand De devices or whatever this hand devices yeah i keep on trying to say call it something else but this is the preamp and um is a wall type olympic type clone and um 
the price I paid, um, I can't remember what it was in American oh. money because they use um, it's in Great British pounds. So because both of these guys are from England, um, the, the creator of this company, he originally was uh, from. All right, um, I'm trying to think. Nuno Mayo, his name. I think he's from either. Portugal or Spain or something like that. I can't remember. I don't want to say it wrong. If Nuno, you see this, I apologize for you know not remembering. I'm, hey, I've been working six days a week. Uh, I work like 10, 12 hours all the time, so I'm pretty tired. <laughs> so, no, I bought this all for about, I think it was like 200 uh, pounds. Uh, they, I forget how much it transfers to, but, you know, it comes with, you know, the battery jack, but I'm not going to use this one, I don't think. I have a nicer enclosed back that I'm going to cut out in the back and put into it. Um, so I won't use this one just for that, but hey, I got it, you know, it came with it. The only thing it didn't come with is the, out, the, is the output jack because he said something about that you'd have to get your own it's a stereo jack. This is the one you need because, it, you know, it's different here in, in the UK with volt, volt, volt voltage and voltage and all other kinds of mess and you know i understand i get that there's no problem with that so this here is uh the circuitry i mean right here this is the uh, this here is the pickup blender it's got this nice little ring so you don't have to use the, the way it is i don't know why this one's the only one that's got the little you know, that little, that little one there, but you put the ring on there. So that way it's just like the other one, but you know, you insert, you know, right around here and on the other side, you know, where the wires from the pickup. So this is solderless to put it in there. So you don't have to use a soldering iron for that. You have to use a soldering iron, you know, when you're putting the jack battery jack and stuff together, there's a few things you have to solder. Yeah, um, yeah, it is cool because like I could never afford a ten thousand dollar base, you know. So this is just the master volume. I mean, maybe one, you know, if I just saved up and just starved, but this is, you know, so that'll go there. So the master volume, you know, you don't need to connect anything. It looks like, and it says it's a, it's an A fifty K pot. Um, this one, it just says A alpha. I don't see where it says anything. He's blacked out some of the stuff where the wiring is to, to hide some stuff. But I think, but no, you can see, you know, well, you know, it's not. You can see all the, the circuitry here. It's pretty, very, very clean. Very, very clean. It says volume and mix on that. He actually, it's like he really wrote really well and printed it. It's very, very cool. It says where the grid and it says the, and there, you know, I also have a, a, um, a diagram that he sent me of how to put it in and put it together. Now these next two are the tone pots. This is what makes this is what makes the the preamp the most important. It's these things here. There are two of them, so I just need to show you one of them. That's all I need to show you because they are exactly the same. And um, instead of like a regular wall, which is pull push, or I mean people say push pull, but you really you pull it the first time, the, then you push it down. When you pull it up, you know, and stuff. When this is push push, you can hear the. click that'll set it from being regular tone filter to giving it a, a db like gain boost um it's like a bright kind of pick attack thing where it adds a lot more trouble and and uh, character to your sound that's what justin uses and getty uses they would keep theirs on and they'd pull theirs all the way up when they use their walls and these are not basic volume tone pot. These are not basic tone pots. They do just, they don't have a click like a preamp would where you're bass in trouble when you get flat and it clicks and you can go all the way up or cut. These things have a, a unique sound and tone where when you start rolling it back, it creates like it's a, it's a tone filter, mid ring sweep kind of thing where it sounds like a wah wah, where when you, and then you can find your perfect sound. You can get this really nice, you know, very uh, plucky, uh, interesting tone with the walls then you can go all the way down to have a very dubby tone like you're in a reggae band and uh, uh, from from the videos i've seen it got really close to imitating and copying the wall so this is close enough in my opinion and that is the lucid hand design devices not designs devices uh, lucid hand devices preamp that i'm going to install into this thing which means i'm going to have to do a lot of modding because 
that's four knobs into a three knob base with the jack here. I'm going to have to put a side jack here. I'm going to drill somewhere and attach it. That actually just the side plate and stuff just came in the mail today. Um, but because yeah, you can see how this does the push pull differently, you know, it actually raises. But yeah, so I'm going to have all these here, and if I need to route that, I'm gonna. I'm also going to have to do some routing already with this pickup, and I'll show you with the other pickup, and then I'll put a second one in. And it's not going to be hard to trace because it looks like you know you got a pick guard. I take the pick guard off, and I can pull it up. Now let's get onto the uh, the pickups. Pickups here are also made in England. Um, it's like thanks for thank you, thanks for your order. Enjoy. This is these are Herrick eight coil pickups by Martin Herrick in in, uh, in the UK. Where you know it's somewhere in the UK. I'm not gonna look at the box and stuff. Whatever. It's but anyways, let's open this up and I'll show you one of the pickups. We don't need to see both of them, but. We can just use the one. It comes with all the stuff here. You know, you got your springs and your screws. And this one also has, you know, you know for them, you know, it's a little compass. So you can also test how, you know, how good your magnet is. Plus, you can use it for other things in the future, like camping. So right here is the Herrick 8 coil, as you can see. And the difference between this and the regular Music Man humbucker, it's a multi-coil. It's not like this is the top here is a coil and this is a coil that's two coils. No, this is eight coils. Each dot is a single coil pickup. So this thing has a unique characteristic sound. And on the back, you can see how clean it was done too. Of you know, that's the extra thing. If you look at it this way, that's how much extra room I'm going to need to to. Uh, to make to fit this pick pickup in just where the old one was but these are rare earth magnets you know this is a very clean style i can cut through here you got all the wires the different kinds right there that i need to put in certain spots because they are specific so i just have to take a little knife and i'll just like cut through it about maybe so you get about here or so you can just cut pull that off and stretch them depending you know after i pull it out but yeah that's that. Now let's compare it when looking at it to just the base itself. So, as you can see, well, flip it over. As you can see, it matches up perfectly. The, ma the magnet actually is taking the string. So I can actually see where I need to put the next one. If I want to put it there and whatnot. But, you know, I can cut it around. But you can definitely see there's a difference and the little tiny magnets here and this these big fat ones. Um, I believe um, the pick I see that this this is a special base in a way with the pickups and the hardware and everything because it's the first short scale they ever made for the inexpensive one and they only made the you know the, the expensive one. So these some of these parts are just specifically made and just actually taken from America just so you know you're you know like, i think it's the preamp maybe the pickup i'm not 100 percent sure but definitely the you know the, the you know the controls here were definitely also this is a 22 fret most stingrays are 21 so i got an extra fret so this is, is a great in between of a mark one and a mark two in a way i have the and also the name of the preamp i forgot to say is this is called the NFP. Uh, this is the stand, standard. So when you get two of them, they call it the uh, the double NFP standard. And this is and they call it notch filter preamp. That's what it stands for. NFP notch filter preamp. And um, and you know these go great with these. See, I, I talked to both Nuno and M Martin. A bunch of times the emails and going through Facebook um, with Nuno because the there's the standard and the special and also these humbuckers are made for actually for the standard and then the new ones the mark three I think they call they're called those are specifically made for the special the special has got the new wiring where it's more typical to like of a jazz bass in a way where each wire is per coil, you know, per coil or something. This is the old way. This is the old original Mark One way. You want the Mark Three or Mark Two, whatever. The older, the older Mark Two, the newer Mark Twos. 
I'm not sure if they all do the same way now, and this is just of what Wall does, but yeah, the uh, newer Mark IIs at least. Oh yeah, you can see you can see the medallion spinning when you well, if you can see it, and you probably can't, but but yeah, it shows that the magnet works. You can definitely tell the magnet works, but yeah, I don't know, you know how it goes and stuff with when they started using the new wiring. This is the old way. I want the old way because I want the Giddy Lee tone. I am big fan of Rush. Uh, Power Windows is my favorite Rush album. It's one of my favorite bass tones. But again, I can't afford a ten thousand dollar bass. I want a wall, but I'm just gonna be okay with creating this and making this into a wall ray. This is Project Wall Ray. That's the name of it. And don't you forget it because next Friday I'll be showing off the tools. I may do uh, some sound clips and stuff of how this thing originally sounds, even though there are videos of this bass by other guys like Low Wind Lobster and who have, you know, have had done this demo on. Yeah, I think it's the exact one because um, the other one has a, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's not a, uh, uh wall, wall, laurel laurel fingerboard which is a uh, cheaper version of uh rosewood and because rosewood has become endangered now so or you know it's been it's it's at the point where only certain companies can use what they have and they're using it for the most high-end stuff um it depends on the rosewood as well as trees continue to grow back over time depending on what company can get what also affects it's the same thing with ebony it was the same thing with um i think now they're going with either ash or alder one of them's being depleted as well unfortunately so we gotta let we have to take a step back to let that everything grow back before we can make more of it but that's a whole nother topic and another video about that stuff but you've seen what i've you know you heard what i've said but what, what's going to be coming up in the future, what I'm going to be doing with all these cool little pickups and preamps. And I got tools now, so I'm going to be learning how to uh, cut open this thing, this base, and make it sound a lot more cooler, much more usable. And um, on a side note, this is not going to be the only one I'm going to mod in the future. I've got uh, another set of, of uh, pickups for another base. And I'm going to get maybe the special or i'll just get another one of these for that one so and that one's a 24 fret and that one like this base is neck through this one's bolted onto the body the other one's completely neck through and it's all maple just about with a rosewood fingerboard so that one will be more like a tool base and this one's going to be more like the rush base so once i get this one done and then i start on the next one the next one's going to be easier because everything's going to drop in I won't have to do any modding. It's already act already has active preamp, so I don't have to worry about anything else. It's going to be an easier job, and I'm going to just not say too much more about that until I get the pickups because uh, Radia has a uh, a three month waiting period, and I bought it like uh, sent them the money like a month or so ago. So I should be getting it in like September or October, depending on you know, shipping because. I already got. I already had a Roddy pickup sent to me, and that was during COVID, you know, like last year. And when that was last year, and it took months and months and months to get through from Finland to me. Radia is in Finland, but you know their pickups are a little uh, more in your ballpark range. Um, a set of these was like about I don't know, 500, 450. So let's say about five hundred. So that would be like. 250 a piece or 225 a piece um great british pound pound so i paid more uh for the pickups alone more for that base so i'm putting pickups alone in a in a base um that's you know it's, it's funny you know that's that but they that's 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 just a musician or tinkerer's you know logic let's just go ahead and screw around and just you know you know, you know, let's do something different, you know. Let's get our hair wet, you know. Let's do whatever. You know, let's have some fun. So that's the whole thing about this is I'm going to have some fun. Uh, last year was kind of eh. And um, this year is 
it's been very, it's going to, you know, the summer's really hard, but <coughs> this, this is going to be a very, very interesting project. I'm very psyched to do this. I haven't, you know, been very excited to do something like this in a long time. Uh, you know, because I've modded, I've modded, uh, my, like I said, I had, uh, pickups for my, um, my other base. And, but I actually put the Rickenbacker, uh, you know, even though I like that, those pickups, I actually enjoyed the Rickenbacker replacement pickup that I got because it just sounded better to me in my ears. And I, you know, I'm a big fan of Rick of, of Cliff Burton and, uh, as well as, uh, as John Taylor, you know, from Duran Duran. So, and I feel like I get both sounds more from just that Rickenbacker pickup at the moment. But hey, who knows? Maybe I'll end up finding uh, another one, and then I can put that pickup in there again, and then another one because I, my that '87 Aria, even though it's neck through as well, then that one's not getting it. That one's not getting the uh, you know the other pickups. No, no, it's keeping it as an you know an Aria box here, as I like to call it. That one's going to be staying that way because I just like it that way. And um, that will, and uh, we got another one. I only pay like three hundred bucks for that old Aria, and uh, it's, it's much more stable and sturdier than my my real Rickenbacker was. And that was a two thousand and seven. So you got like a twenty year difference, and the old tech is better than the new tech in that way. Vintage is better for all those vintage nuts saying vintage is better. You know, you're right on that mark because the Rickenbacker had a lot of comp. You know, a lot of cons that I didn't like. I don't like gloss necks. The body was pretty sharp. All right, Lawrence says something about modding instruments. He had a friend who passed away that made his own last ball clone guitar. That is very awesome. Um, yeah, I originally wanted to just build myself a clone wall. You know, talk to a, a luthier, and there's there were some shady ones around. There were some guys that were good, and the guy I wanted to, you know, actually just do it all for me. Um, Unfortunately, he, he had a heart attack, but he's okay. But he's backed up with so many people needing him, and he was he's also working slower and slower pace because of that, uh, you know, his health because of that. And um, I hope Joe Wilson's doing great. You know, if you know if you're in South Carolina, Mount Pleasant's the place to go. It is uh, he's the guy. He's a great blues guitar player and an awesome dude. Uh, he actually I actually had him. Uh, the, the Aria Bacher originally had it, when I bought it, it was defretted and turned into a fretless and, you know, epoxy and, and the, the, the lines in it was actually Bondo. He told me that when he uh, was cutting it off, it was bouncing everywhere. He's like, yeah, it was Bondo. And he was like, when, you know, it was like, and it had this, this really crappy guitar EMG pickup and it was active and it sounded horrible, but the neck felt great. So I sent it to him and just asked him to just re to convert it back to fretted. That was it. I paid him, um, and uh, he told me, oh, guitar players, bass players, anybody that saw that, you know, came in, they saw me working on it. They want. They said, is that for sale? Is that for sale? Is that yours for sale? He's like, you're fixing that for sales like I wanted. That thing's great. He says, no, it's for some, you know, it's another guy, and I'm pretty sure he wants to keep it. He said, and he was like, so I had a keeper, you know, and actually it was one of the guys that was, I had his thing in the shop too. It was a Zon bass, I believe it was, and that guy wanted it. And I was like, nah, man, you, you have a nice expensive Zon bass you paid uh, quite a few grand for. I like my uh, $300 Aria. Um, that's my birth year. That's why I bought it. I wanted a birth year bass, also a bass that, you know, represented some of my favorite um, bass players of, you know, of that decade, which was the 80s. I love the 80s. And that's that's another thing. The wall bass tone most was in the 80s tone, man. And that's what I'm trying to do is uh, capture more cool, unique sounds. I mean, everybody has a P bass or a jazz bass. Some have Stingrays. Some have, like, these crazy Ibanez active basses, which are great. I love Ibanez and other companies and crazier companies. But trying to get a hold of a wall is very rare. They are something you can see some being sold here and there. But unfortunately... They, they still want the same price, 10 grand or more. I mean, I've seen one that was made in the 70s, late 70s, uh, go for 
you're trying to, he was trying to get like six, seven grand. It was one pickup, a neck pickup model. And had like uh and those back then had a pick guard and those pick guards weren't plastic or anything those were leather and they're etched leather and they had flowers and other kind of stuff on them it was very custom shop back then then they were called the j jg customs or something or something like that it was probably a guy's name i don't i can't think of it's like when the original war thumb base came out it's called the jd thumb because the guy who uh was the bass player was an american by the name of John Davis, Jonathan Davis, who is not the singer of Corn. He was a different guy. He was a black guy who worked in the military for America, and he was stationed in a, in a base in Germany and near Mark McCurchin or something. And he went to the guys of Warwick and, and uh, like Hans Peter Wolfer and said, I want a base. I'm a base that looked like this, like my thumb, you know, or, you know, in a way. So they made and modeled that after, and it was originally called the JD Thumb. Then later on, they modified it more, and it became what was known today as the regular thumb. That's probably what the JG Custom is. It, it was like one of their first few prototypes, and because that's everything that our walls were and originally were custom work. But with that said, it's been over 30 minutes. I think I've wasted enough of your time just with this introductory video. But with that said, You've seen what I got. You see what I'm going to do with it. Well, for the most part, next week, next Friday, I'll see what you know what the next part is. If I want to showcase some sound clips of this, trying some tool, some rush, some you know, some you know, red hot chili peppers, and the same refs I use, maybe some of my own. Um, I'm going to go back when I've made this mod job. And I'm going to retry to do it again um, so you can hear back-to-back -back difference, you know, from weeks prior or a month prior or whatever of how it's transitioned to now. And, uh, you know, this is going to be my interesting first try trial at a big job like this. I've done, I've had help um, putting the, the Duncan in. Um, I've installed, you know, wall, so, you know, wire, uh, solderless stuff myself, like my precision, my fretless P base. It's got PJ Geezer, Butler signature EMGs in there. I just put those things in there, and the, and that was a pretty simple thing because it already f just fit right in. And I did a little bit of modding for here and there for other stuff, and uh, I had an Iceman base that I had uh, put Gay Elite Jazz pickups in, and I had a friend help me. He had the tools. And uh, we installed those into the base and stuff, and we, we got that all set up. And that was a great base. Uh, I don't have it on me at the moment. I ha it's um, at a friend's place, and he's taking good care of it at the moment. But, yeah, um, yeah, um, this is going to be a really cool job, and I can't wait to try it. And um, thank everybody who has, you know, decided to watch this live and uh and if anyone else who sees this later on in the playback, um, you know, if you want to drop comments in the comment section or ask something, um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to, tr you know, re-edit the video and drop links to the uh, Herrick website. I'm going to drop links to uh, Luc Lucid uh, Hand Devices, uh, their their uh, Instagram and their Facebook. I don't have Instagram. I only talk to Nuno through Facebook, through through his official page. He is a great guy. He's a really cool guy. I hope he likes seeing this video when I send it to him. Um, you know, for you know, he, you know, th these guys are living the dream by making the dream happen for other people, and we should be all grateful for both Nuno and Martin, and as well as Vejo. Who makes his own multi coils? Well, he calls them multi coils. They're eight coils, but you know, he calls his multi coils. He makes them in different sizes. The one I'm using is 20 lit percent less output that'll be going in the other base, but it's EMG style size, so it'll drop in perfectly. It's a little bit smaller than an EMG pickup, but it'll fit, and that's all that matters. I uh, have to go grab a few more little tools I need. I realize I didn't get any copper leaf shielding, so I'm going to need that and make sure I have all the drill bits I need and everything as well. But I have, you know, I have routers. I have, you know, you know, I've ha I got, you know, I got the soldering irons. I got, you know, all sorts of other things. So, 
And I'll show that another time while I'm working on it. And uh, thanks, guys, for uh, you know watching the video. And you know, when, uh, hopefully, if you're watching this, and it's been a while, so you'll be seeing all of them back to back. Maybe. Uh, hope you enjoy the journey that I'm going on. That you might be also coming on with me. So you guys have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Love you guys. Melter out.